So to kick off our program, I want to introduce Kevin Chavis, who is a senior advisor to the American Federation for Children and the Alliance for School Choice and a national school reform leader. As a former member of the Washington, D.C. City Council and chair of the Council's Education Committee, he was at the forefront of promoting change within the district public school system. As a board member for such national education reform organizations as the Black Alliance for Educational Options and Democrats for Education Reform, Kevin has a unique perspective on the impact of the, of the Zellman decision across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Chavis. Thanks so much. Uh, let's give Matt a round of applause for his leadership. And Bill, congratulations today. You know, it's interesting coming to the microphone after Matt. He's one of the few people I have to lower the mic, you know, when I get up here. Um, I will, in the words of a good friend of mine, uh, follow the three Bs, be brief, be brilliant, and be gone. Uh, at least I work on two out of three. The first thing I want to do is congratulate each of you for your hard work that led to the Supreme Court decision just 10 years ago this month. This was a phenomenal accomplishment. And while we never underestimate those that fight against change, I know many of you did not expect the level of fight that was put up by the status quo. But based on the perseverance, hard work, and commitment of many people in this room, 10 years ago this month, we accomplished a goal that we celebrate tonight. Let's give all of you a round of applause for your work that led us here. Now that was 10 years ago, but over the last decade since the Supreme Court decision, there's been a record of success that has been unparalleled, particularly over the last year. If we go back at the turn of the century, and for those of you who've been around, I'm talking about the turn of the century from the 1990s to the 2000s. But since the turn of the century, there has been a seven-fold increase in the number of children enrolled in private school programs nationwide. In the last year alone, seven new programs were created, 11 were expanded and restored, and 40 states had private school choice bills introduced. Last year, as the Wall Street Journal said, was the year of school choice. And what's great about being here, it started right here in Cleveland. And I do want to give a shout out to the speaker and the governor for their hard work, for Joanne Davidson, for Senator Voinovich, who helped us with the DC program. We appreciate all that you did to make sure that program was maintained. My good friend Dixie Allen, who I see over there, who I used to listen to her pound the table talking about the need to help children now, and I'm glad she's here. At the American Federation for Children Summit just last month, the theme was breakthrough victories for children. And with all that we've accomplished over the last year, with 210,000 children nationwide being enrolled in these programs, there has been a breakthrough. But do not be deluded by our success. Breakthrough means progress. It does not mean that we have won. Yes, we have nearly 600,000 potential eligible children for a statewide program just next door in my birthplace of Indiana. Yes, we have 400,000 potential eligible children in Louisiana. Yes, in Milwaukee, they've, in Wisconsin, they've expanded the program. We've got bills pending in places like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and I know 10 years ago, you wouldn't think that there would be private school choice legislation pending in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. But even though we've had all those accomplishments, we still have far to go because far too many of our children are trapped in failing schools. And the challenge we have in convincing the rest of America, not the parents, but the decision makers, the so-called thought leaders, is that we need to ensure that each and every American child 
has equal access to a high quality education today, right now, not tomorrow, today. So as I close, I want to reinforce the need for each of you to renew and re-engage in this fight for our children's future. And this is especially important here in Ohio. We have to remember one thing, that our work does not stop as long as too many of our children can't read. Our work does not stop as long as the drop rate, dropout rates continue to escalate, not decline. In this city, as many as 70% of the black males that enter high school drop out. Our work is not done if there are still kids out there who don't get a fair shot at the American dream simply because of their zip code. And as you renew and re-engage, make sure that your focus remains on where it should be, and that's the parents and their children. This is especially important in this year, this political year, where the background noise from both parties will drown the reality facing many of our parents. Remember and know this, there is no Democrat or Republican way to teach a child how to read, write, count, or compete. Make sure, make sure as the pundits talk about which party is doing best for children that we stay focused on what's best for children. And we continue to speak truth to power and not let the partisan politics of the day harm our work, our work that we know in our souls is universally good for our parents and this nation. Speaking of parents, join me in acknowledging my friend from Akron, Ohio, Kelly Williams Bolar, who stood for her children against one of the worst districts in this state in Akron. And she went to jail to make sure that her children went to a good school. Please acknowledge Kelly Williams Bolar. Kelly is symbolic of the parent revolution that is engulfing this nation. It started here last year, I mean 10 years ago. But now you have parents driving change because they are sick and tired of being sick and tired. So as I leave you, leave you this evening, allow me to share one final vignette. A couple of weeks ago, I testified in Congress on parental engagement. And as I spoke to the urgency of flying the plane while we fix it, various members on both sides of the political aisle spoke about why they did not support school choice or vouchers. They said it didn't help all the kids. It created a brain drain on the system. It took money from the district, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, one woman apparently saw my testimony online and she reached out to me a few days later. And she told me about her experience, her personal story, her struggles in trying to pay the tuition for her only son to go to a private school. And she found the comments of many of the members of Congress incredulous. And she said to me, these people send their kids to the best schools and they think average people like me should be patient and wait. Are they serious? Don't they know we aren't going to wait for them to do what's right for us? Don't they know we are tired of waiting? Listening to that mother reminded me so much of the contents of Dr. King's letter from a Birmingham jail. In that letter, he chastised the clergy of his time for telling him to wait and not go to Birmingham, to wait for the right time to pass the Civil Rights Act. Folks, the last civil rights struggle in America is making sure each child has equal access to high quality education, and we can't wait for the right time. We can't wait for the three to five year school reform plan du jour that comes up every time there's a new superintendent. We can't wait for the legislative timing or budget readiness that says now's the time to do it. We can't wait for states, even like this state, to amend arcane school funding formula laws so that we can get our children a good education. We can't wait for the right time. And surely, we can't wait for those congressmen and those state leaders around the country. We can't wait for them to wake up 
while some of these poor neighborhood schools continue to put our children to sleep. As Dr. King said in the 60s, we are facing the fierce urgency now of now, and now is the time. Now is the time for each and every American child to have access to high-quality educational options that can only be found by full-fledged parental choice. Those options that include uh, charter schools, magnet schools, specialty schools, tax credits, vouchers, all the things that are available to make sure children get what they are entitled, regardless of their ethnicity, their race, their zip code, or their socioeconomic status. My friends, I celebrate you this evening, but our fight is not done. Continue to fight for the children of this country and our nation. Thank you.